Well, good morning. It's time for uh, the children of Israel to go through the Red Sea on dry land. This is a very exciting moment in biblical history. And it's reflected in Paul's words to the Corinthian church in 1 Corinthians 10, when it kind of makes the connection between the Israelites going through the Red Sea. And they, he says there that, uh, that they were baptized into Moses and they went through on dry land. It's a very interesting statement that he makes at the opening of the 10th chapter of 1 Corinthians. Uh, he says, all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And this is what we want to look at today. Is that what, do we, what do we mean by the cloud and the sea? Well, here's what happened back in Exodus 14. Uh, the people of Israel were out of Egypt, and they were on their way to the promised land. But the Lord specifically led them, in a sense, into a trap where they were stuck at this point of the sea with what ended up being the pursuing army of Pharaoh coming against them. And why, were, why was the army of Pharaoh coming against them when Pharaoh had just recently agreed to let the people go? Well, we're told here that this was all part of the plan of God, that he would get glory over Pharaoh and all his host and the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. And what happened is that the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart's heart and the heart of his servants. And they changed their minds about the Israelites and began to pursue them with chariots. The Egyptians pursued God's people and overtook them. But then the Lord put this protection of the cloud between Egypt and Israel. So it was his own divine presence. He protected them. Now, the people of God were panicking, and they turned on Moses. And why did you bring us out here? Didn't we tell you we'd be fine back in Egypt? And, and Moses tried to reassure them, fear not, he said, stand firm and, and see the salvation of the Lord which he will work for you today. He said, look, the Egyptians that you see now, you'll never see them again. And then, of course, still Moses, his heart was so troubled. He's praying out to God, and the Lord says, why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to, to go forward. That was the very thing that it looked like they couldn't do, was go forward, because the sea was right there. So they're protected by the cloud and fire of God, but they can't go forward. So God says, lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the people of Israel may go through the sea on dry ground. And he says, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they shall go in after them, and I will get glory over, over Pharaoh and all his hosts, his chariots and his horsemen. So the angel of God, who was going before the host of Israel, moved into this position behind Israel to have this protection. And this was the pillar of cloud that Paul then refers to in 1 Corinthians 10. So they're protected. But then Moses stretches out his hand, according to the commandment of God, over the sea, and the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and made the sea dry land. The waters were divided there. Now, the Egyptians would pursue. They would pursue. But me meanwhile, the Lord's people had gone through on dry land. And in the morning watch, just as the morning was coming. I'm I'm looking out my window and the and the the sky is lightning. It's it's like the morning watch time. Just at that point, can you imagine the morning watch? The Lord uh, in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down on the Egyptian forces and threw the Egyptian forces into a panic. 
you know, their chariot wheels are getting clogged up and they're getting stuck and they end up getting immersed in that water. Whereas the Israelites are, they're just baptized uh, into Moses through this experience. And the end result is that Israel saw the great power that the Lord used against the Egyptians in their destruction. And so the people feared the Lord and they believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. How much more should we believe? Let's pray. Father, thank you for the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, and also the waters of baptism that have come upon your people. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we've been baptized and brought into your covenant people, your covenant community. Bless us, Lord, and help us to follow in the ways of righteousness. In Jesus' name, amen. Many blessings now.